السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, finishing off with Imam Al Hajjawi his book pertaining to fasting rulings the rulings pertaining to fasting we have the last chapter in that book which is باب الاعتكاف the chapter pertaining to اعتكاف uh, Sheikh Mansour in, in his explanation he says al i'tikaf lughatan i'tikaf linguistically is lazumu shay wal iqbal alayhi wal iqbal alayhi is to be attached to something or committed to something and to uh, be yani uh, iqbal alayhi to go forward uh, with the action yuqal i'takafa fulan bi makan kada idha aqama bihi a person has made i'tikaf if he has committed himself to a particular place walam yakhruj anhu and he hasn't left that place wa minhu qawlu ibrahim alayhi salam and from it is the statement of ibrahim alayhi salam in surah al-anbiya ma hadhihi tamathil allati antum laha akifun ibrahim alayhi salam said what are these statues that you are making i'tikaf of meaning you have committed yourself to these statues akifun فالعاكف على شيء هو المقيم عليه. So the akif, the one who is making i'tikaf, he is the one who is committed to that thing and attached to that thing. شرعا. Uh, technically the definition is لزوم مسجد لطاعة الله تعالى. To commit yourself to the masjid in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. على اعتكاف ثابت بالكتاب والسنة والإجماع. اعتكاف is legislated via the Quran. The kitab via the sunnah and via the ijma, the consensus. For min al-kitab, so as for the kitab, the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, we have in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ آكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, do not approach your wife sexually whilst you are making i'tikaf in the masajid. And from the sunnah, many ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we will touch upon in a while. And the third thing, the ijma' of the ulama, the consensus of the ulama. نَقَلَهُ جَمَاعَةً كَيْبِنِ مُنْذِرِ So a group of ulama, they um, brought about that there is a consensus on this. From them is the Imam Ibn Mundhir and the Imam Ibn Abdul Bar and Imam Al-Nawawi also Imam Ibn Hajr Al-Asqalani Rahmatullah alayhim jami'an May Allah have mercy on all of them and there were others from amongst them too. So the author, he said, Luzum masjid, Luzumu masjidin, to be confined and attached and committed to a masjid. Kharajil bihi ma law lazama ghayr al-masjid. So obviously this excludes if a person had made i'tikaf or had been committed to other than a masjid. Kaddar, like a house, or a madrasa, or a school, or a musalla, or a prayer place which is not a masjid. فَكُلُّ هَذَا لَا يُسَمَّ اَتِّكَافًا So all of these things are not considered to be اَتِّكَاف And the question to yourselves is why? Why is it, no, why is it not to be considered as اَتِّكَاف? These places. I just mentioned to you a verse from the Qur'an. The proof is in that verse if you recall it. So these places are not considered اَتِّكَاف. The reason being because Allah said in the Qur'an, that verse, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ آكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ And don't have sexual relationships with your wives whilst you are مُعْتَكِفِين whilst you are in اَتِّكَاف in, uh, in the masjid. So the verse mentioned that it was to do with the masjid. So outside of the masjid, it's not considered اَتِّكَاف. Sheikh Amir Bahjat, Hafidhullah Ta'ala in his explanation of this uh, book, Zad al Mustaqniya, he said that any length of time that you make i'tikaf for, as long as it's considered to be a length of time, in something which is reasonable, like an hour or so and above an hour, then that is considered to be i'tikaf. So if somebody was to make i'tikaf in the masjid for only an hour and above, then that would be considered as valid. The author he said, Ta'atun lillahi ta'ala. So this i'tikaf, it is done as obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so this is the maqsood min al-i'tikaf wa huwa tafarruq li ibadati Allah ta'ala. So this is the intent of the i'tikaf. It is not to go and meet your friends. It is not to go and have a semi-holiday in the masjid where you can catch up with people that you haven't seen for a whole year. Rather, it is to free yourself to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if somebody just goes into the masjid and he ends up sleeping in the masjid, for six hours, then that is not i'tikaf because he didn't do it in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
The author, he said, Masnoonun, meaning that this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is something which has consensus of the scholars in Islam, that it's Sunnah for the person to do Itikaf. And from the evidences of this is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself did it, and he continued to do it uh, as long as he was alive Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we have the hadith in Bukhari, narrated by Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu. Who said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam كان يعتكف في العشر الأوسط من رمضان that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make اعتكاف in the middle ten days of Ramadan فاعتكف عاما حتى إذا كان ليلة أحدى وعشرين so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he made اعتكاف one year until it was the twenty first night of Ramadan وهي الليلة التي يخرج من صبيحتها من اعتكافه and it is the night, the 21st night, the morning of it, when the Prophet ﷺ would leave his i'tikaf of the middle 10 days in Ramadan. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Man kana i'takafa ma'i, whoever had made i'tikaf with me in these middle 10 days, falya'takif al ashr al awakhir, then now let him do the last 10 days with me. So from that point on, the Prophet ﷺ not only did he used to do the middle 10 days, but now he moved on to doing the last 10 days of Ramadan. And this was something from his sunnah. And Imam al Zuhri, one of the famous Imams in Islam, uh, it's mentioned by Ibn al Hajl, Ibn Hajl al Asqalani, Fatul al Bari, Volume 4. That Imam al Zuhri, he said, Ajiban lil Muslimin. He said, Strange and yani, odd is the affair of the Muslims. Tarakul i'tikaf, they left alone this act of i'tikaf when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lam yatruku mundu dakhla al madinata hatta qabada Allah ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never left of i'tikaf from the day he entered Medina until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his soul. So it's something which is well established by the action of the Prophet The author, he said, And it's permissible to do an i'tikaf even if the person is not fasting. And the evidence for that is in Bukhari. The Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Ya Rasulullah, inni nadartu fil jahiliyati an a'takifa laylatan fil masjid al-haram. O Messenger of Allah, me, before entering into Islam, I had made a vow that I would do a type of i'tikaf in the Masjid of Haram. So the Prophet ﷺ said, O fi bi nadrika, fulfill your vow. So here in this hadith, we can see that the uh, fasting was not told to Umar radiallahu anhu by the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said to Umar, fulfill your vow of making it tiakaf, and he didn't establish the condition that you have to be fasting to do so. And also, Sheikh Masood, he said, And also because the fasting is an independent act of worship. So it's not considered to be a condition for i'tikaf. Thirdly, And also we have this statement from, many of the, from some of the companions, عنهم, like Ibn Abbas, عنهما, who said, ليس على المعتكف صيام إلا أن يجعله على نفسه. He said it's not incumbent upon the word upon the person who is making it اعتكاف to fast unless that person makes it incumbent upon himself. And this was mentioned by Imam Al Hakim in his Mustadrak. And also Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, وأنتم آكفون في المساجد. فدل فقد دل إطلاق الآية على مشروعية الاعتكاف بلا صوم. So this verse, وَأَنْتُمْ آكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Where Allah said, and you are making i'tikaf in the masjid, it's a general verse. And it doesn't mention that you are making i'tikaf whilst you are fasting. Okay? So the point is that the person can make i'tikaf without uh, fasting, as, as mentioned by our author and all the points that we mentioned. There is another riwayah, another narration of Imam Ahmad in the Madhab that says that a psalm shartun sihat al i'tikaf, that fasting is a condition for the validity of i'tikaf. This is a second narration that uh, Imam Ahmad mentions, and it's um, held by Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, and also it's the Madhab of Imam Malik. However, the official opinion we have explained. The author, he said, وَلْيَلْزَمَانِ بِالنَّذَرْ The author is saying that these two things are incumbent if the person makes a vow to do them. 
So he's referring to the fact that if a person makes a vow that he's going to fast, then that vow is incumbent. If a person makes a vow that he's going to make atikaf, he's going to do atikaf, then that also is incumbent. If a person makes a vow that he's going to do both of them together, then that is also incumbent. So the Prophet وسلم, said in Bukhari, Man nadra an Allah ta'ala fal That whoever has made a vow to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a particular act of worship, then he should fulfill that act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the author he says, Wala yasihu illa fi masjidin yujamma'a fihi, yujamma'u fihi. And it's not permitted in a masjid, meaning that it's not permitted in any masjid to make i'tikaf except for the one which has the daily prayers established in it. Okay? And the evidence for this is where the Prophet, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that verse in Surah Al-Baqarah that we've quoted a few times, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ آكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ And don't have relationships with your wives whilst you are making i'tikaf in the masajid. خَصَّهُمْ بِذَلِكَ فَأَفَادَ بِمَفْهُومِ الْحَالِ أَنَّهُ لَا اَتِّكَافِ فِي غَيْرِ الْمَسْجِدِ So the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst you are in the masjid is a description of a state, a state of being, that the i'tikaf is whilst you are in the masjid. So it's as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alluding to the fact that i'tikaf is only to be done in the masjid. So that is the reality of the situation, that i'tikaf is only to be done in the masjid and it's only to be done in a masjid wherein the five daily prayers are held. Uh, we have in Abi Dawood, uh, we have the hadith from Aisha radiallahu anha, وَلَا اَعْتِكَافَ إِلَّا فِي مَسْجِدٍ جَامِئٍ where she said that there is no i'tikaf except in the masjid where people, they pray the five daily prayers in congregation. So the dhabit al-masjid al-ladhi yu'takafu fihi an yakuna masjidan tusalli fi al-jama'ah so the dhabit, the regulating rule of which masjid is permissible to make i'tikaf in, is the one that five daily prayers are taking place there. And as Shaykh Amir Bahajat, he mentioned that it doesn't have to have Salatul Jum'ah. Salatul Jum'ah doesn't have to be in that masjid. But what has to be in that masjid where are you making i'tikaf is that the five daily prayers are established there. Question to yourselves, a man is traveling okay and he finds whilst he's traveling he comes across an empty masjid so he decides to stay in that masjid for about five to six hours and making i'tikaf there is his i'tikaf valid for him or not is his i'tikaf valid for him or not so we said that i'tikaf has to be in a masjid where there's five daily prayers however this person is traveling so upon the traveler it's not an obligation to pray in the masjid right it's not an obligation for the traveler to pray in a masjid where there is jama', where there is congregation. So therefore in this situation and a few others, the person is exempt from the ruling that we mentioned before. That the i'tikaf has to be in a masjid where there is salatul jama' five times a day. Uh, and also we need to mention that for a person to have a valid i'tikaf, that of course the person has to have the niyyah. The person has to have the intention to make i'tikaf for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the author he says, Except for a woman. So he's ex excluding the woman from the previous rule of where i'tikaf can be made. He said, except for a woman, a woman can make i'tikaf in any masjid except for the masjid of her house. Right? So yusahu i'tikafuha fi kulli masjidin wa in lam taqum fihi al jama'a. So the reason is because that Salat al-Jama'ah is not obligatory upon the woman. Congregation Salat is not obligatory upon the woman. Therefore, she can make the i'tikaf in any masjid apart from the masjid of her house. Okay. Now, Had it been permissible for a woman to make i'tikaf in her prayer place in her house, then the wives of the Prophet ﷺ would have done that at least once to show the permission or the permissibility of doing that. Because for the woman, from the greatest of places for her to pray is to pray in her house and not in the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ said that to them whilst they were uh, around, the, uh, around the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. 
So the Prophet ﷺ would remind the women that for you to pray in your houses is better for you to pray in the masjid, though he didn't for forbid them from doing so. So going back to the point of evidence, the fact that the wives of the Prophet ﷺ never took it upon themselves to make i'tikaf in their prayer places at home means that it's not permissible. And also adding to that is um, any other musallayat, any other prayer places which are not masajid. Okay, they are just general open prayer rooms like at work or in a madrasa. These also are not acceptable to make etika for the woman there. The author he said, وَمَن نَذَرَهُ أَوْ صَلَاةَ فِي مَسْجِدِ غَيْرِ ثَلَاثَ لَمْ يَلْزَمْهُ فِيهِ So I'm just changing the way that the author has uh, made this statement to make it more comprehensible. The author he said, whoever has vowed to do the i'tikaf or to do a prayer in the masjid other than the three, then his uh, i'tikaf, his vow of i'tikaf and his vow to make a prayer in other than the three masjids is not incumbent upon him. Lam yalzamhu fihi is not incumbent upon him to fulfill that vow in that place. So he still has to fulfill the vow that he's made upon himself to do i'tikaf or to pray but it doesn't have to be in the three masjids, right? It can be in any other masjid. So what are these three masjids? They are وَأَفْضَلُهَا مَسْجِدُ الْحَرَامِ The best of these masjids from the three is the Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca and then it's the Masjid of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina, the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina, Fal Aqsa and then the last of them in virtue is the Masjid Al-Aqsa. So, as we said that if a person makes a vow to make i'tikaf or to make a prayer in any masjid other than, than these three, then it's not going to be incumbent upon him. Rather, he can do it in any masjid. But the vow still has to be fulfilled. In Bukhari and Muslim, we have the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who said that the Prophet sallallahu said, لا تشد الرحال إلا إلى ثلاثة مساجد المسجد الحرام ومسجد الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ومسجد الأقصى that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this hadith do not embark upon a journey specifically to any masjid other than the three masjids masjid al-haram and the masjid of the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم and the masjid al-aqsى so you cannot intend to pray in the sense of thinking that there is virtue in praying in a particular masjid and traveling to that masjid other than the three that were mentioned in the hadith. The author he said, وَإِنْ عَيَّنَ الْأَفْضَلْ لَمْ يَجُزْ فِي مَا دُونَهُ وَعَكْسُهُ بِعَكْسِهِ If you make the intention with regards to these three masajid that have these virtues, the masjid of the Haram, the masjid of the Prophet وسلم, and masjid al-Aqsa. So if you make the intention to, to pray for example, in Mecca, right? You make the uh, you make the vow that you're going to pray in Mecca. Then it's not allowed for you then to pray either in Medina or in Masjid Al-Aqsa because they are less in virtue. However, the opposite is allowed. If you make the intention to pray in Masjid Al-Aqsa, which is the least of them in virtue, you can then make it also. You can fulfill your vow in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu or in the Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. But you can't do it the opposite way. You can't do it the opposite way. So, an evidence for that is the hadith in, uh, collected by Imam Ahmad and Abi Dawood where Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu anhu said Anna rajulun qama yawm al-fatih That a man stood up on the day of Fatih, the day that the victory was given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conquering Mecca. He said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, inni nadartu lillahi an in fatah Allahu alayka makkata. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I made a vow to Allah azza wa jal that had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given you, given you the victory over Mecca, an usalli fi bayt al-maqdis raka'atayn. That I would pray, an usalliya fi bayt al-maqdis raka'atayn. That I would pray in Masjid al-Aqsa, bayt al-maqdis, two raka'a. فقال, so the Prophet وسلم, said, Salli ha huna. So the Prophet وسلم, always wanting ease for his ummah and his companions, said, Pray them here, pray them in Mecca. And then the man he again repeated to the Prophet وسلم, what he had said, that he made the intention, the vow to pray to Raqqa in Masjid al Aqsa. The Prophet وسلم, said, Salli ha huna, pray them here. 
Then the Prophet, then the man said it a third time. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Sha'nuka idan." Then it's up to you. Do as you wish. فَدَلَّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ إِذَا نَذْرَ الْأَدْنَىٰ جَازَ الْأَعْلَىٰ وَلَا عَكْسِ So the evidence from the hadith for what the author is saying that if you choose the lower place you're allowed to do it in the higher place of virtue because the man wanted to do it in Masjid Al-Aqsa and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was guiding him to do it in Masjid Al-Haram Okay the author he said, وَمَنْ نَذْرَ زَمَنًا مُعَيِّدًا دَخَلَ مَعْتَكَفَهُ قَبْلَ لَيْلَتِهِ الْأُولَى وَخَرَجَ بَعْدَ آخِرِهِ Whenever you intend to make a'tikaf, okay, you've made a vow to make a'tikaf for a particular duration of time, let's say 10 days to make it easy, then you have to enter into the a'tikaf in the masjid before the maghrib of that first night, okay, before the maghrib of the first night of the 10th. And you have to leave then on the last of them. So for example, Sheikh Mansour, he says, if a person says, لِلَّهِ عَلَيَّ أَنْ أَعْتَكِفَ الْعَشْرَ الْأَوَاخِرِ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ I have vowed to Allah Azza wa Jal that I'm going to make a'tikaf in the last 10 days, 10 nights of Ramadan. فَالْوَقْتُ لِأَتِكَافِ حَيْنَهَا يَبْدَ مِنْ غُرُوبِ الشَّمْسِ لَيْلَةِ الْعَشْرِ So it starts from before Maghrib of the 10th, uh, of the 20th night, the, the first of the 10th nights until the sunset of the last of those ten nights question to yourselves when is it mustahab when is it recommended because what we just mentioned now is um, is the ruling of uh, when it's when it's when it should be done right but then it's also when is it recommended the question to yourselves when is it recommended by all of the madhahib, and we mentioned this in the um, Bab Salat al idain in the chapter pertaining to the two Eid Salahs. When is it recommended for the person to leave his i'tikaf? When is it mustahab? So, uh, after Maghrib is what we've mentioned already, that you have to enter if you've made a vow. If you've made a vow, you have to enter uh, before the 10 days, before the Maghrib of the first 10 nights, and then you leave at the last uh, Maghrib of the 10 nights. However, the majority of the ulama uh, and the Hanbalis, they say that it's highly recommended that the person leaves his i'tikaf once the, um, the Salatul Eid is going to be established. So he goes to the i'tikaf, he goes to the Salatul Eid with the clothing that he was wearing for his i'tikaf. This is something which is highly recommended. The author he says, وَلَا يَخْرُجْ الْمُعْتَكِفُ إِلَّا لِمَا لَا بُدَّ مِنْهُ And the one who made this vow of i'tikaf, he doesn't leave his i'tikaf except for that which is incumbent for him to leave for, except for that which is a necessity. So he cannot leave the i'tikaf except for that which is a necessity. Because لُبْتْ فِي masjid, remaining in the masjid is a rukan, is a pillar of the i'tikaf. So if somebody leaves the i'tikaf, then it's like he has broken that rukan, that pillar of the i'tikaf. And in Abi Dawood, we have the evidence from Aisha radiallahu anha. She said, a sunnatu ala al-mu'takif. She said, the sunnah upon the ones making i'tikaf. And from them she said, وَلَا يَخْوُجَ لِحَاجَةٍ إِلَّا لِمَا لَا بُدَّ مِنْهُ And he doesn't leave the i'tikaf except for that which is a necessity for him to leave for. So if the reason is a necessity, you have to, then you can do so. Sheikh Mansour, he said, وَخُرُوجُ المُعْتَكِفِ مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ لِأَمْنِ لَا بُدْ لَهُ مِنْهُ شَرْعًا أَوْ طَبْعًا لَهُ أَحْوَالٍ So the person who has to leave the masjid for that which is a necessity or that which is normally uh, a reason to do so, it has various situations. From them he mentions, number one, الْخُرُوجُ لِقَضَاءِ الْحَاجَةِ To leave the masjid in order to, in order to um, fulfill your uh, call of nature needs. Or to wash off some najasa and other similar situations like that. فَهَذَا لَا يُبْتِلُ الْاَعْتِكَافِ So this doesn't break the i'tikaf. لِأَنَّهُ لَا يُمْكِنُ فَعْلُهُ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ Because this is not able to be done in the masjid. لَكِنْ لَا يُطِيلُ الْمُكْثِ بَعْدَ حَاجَتِهِ However, after the person has fulfilled these needs, he shouldn't spend a long time out of the masjid. A second scenario that the Sheikh Mansour mentions, he said, Al-Khuruj li Tahara til Wajiba, or that the person has to leave the masjid to make 
uh, obligatory purification like ghusl from janaba wal wudu or making wudu wa nahwihi for hadha or something similar to that so this has two situations a, the first of them in lam yumkin hu fa'l dhalika fil masjid fa yajuz al khuruj li dhalik if the person cannot make this tahara or this wudu in the masjid then it's permissible for him to leave b in tamakkana min fa'l dhalika fil masjid if the person is able to do that in the masjid li wujud makan mu'add li dhalik because there is a place that has been specified for making purification fal yalzimu dhalik so then it's imperative that he stays in the masjid and does his purification in that place and he's not allowed to leave the masjid for purification unless there is uh, some harm or fear of him doing it, the purification in the masjid. The author, he said, وَلَا يَعُودُ مَرِيضًا And it's not permissible for the one who's making i'tikaf to visit one who is sick. وَلَا يَشْهَدُ جَنَازَةً And nor is it permissible for him to observe a funeral, to follow a funeral procession and to pray at a funeral. إِلَّا أَنْ يَشْتَرِطَهُ Unless he makes a condition upon himself when making the i'tikaf. So the person is not allowed to visit a sick person, nor is he allowed to follow a funeral procession, etc. If he does that, then his i'tikaf is going to be broken. Uh, however, if he makes a condition, then he's allowed to do so. So let's first take the evidence to say that it's not allowed to be done. The hadith in Abi Dawood of Aisha radiyallahu anha, she said, قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يمر بالمريض that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would pass by somebody who is sick وهو معتكف and he was in the masjid making اعتكاف فيمر كما هو ولا يعرج يسأل عنه and when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had seen the sick person maybe through the whether it was in the masjid or out of the masjid through the window the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم wouldn't leave his اعتكاف his place of اعتكاف to go and ask about the sick person and also she said رضي الله عنها السنة على المعتكف أن لا يعود مريضا ولا يشهد جنازة she said that the سنة uh, not in the same hadith in another hadith Aisha رضي الله عنها she said that the سنة upon the person making اعتكاف is that he doesn't visit a sick person nor does he follow a funeral procession unless he makes um, unless he makes a شرط unless he makes a condition upon himself that he is able to do so like for example, if somebody who is sick passes away, then I'm going to go and, and uh, attend a funeral procession. Or if somebody is really sick, I'm going to go and visit them. Uh, and the evidence for making ishtirat, the evidence for making a condition which allows you to leave the i'tikaf for such matters, is the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he said, المسلمون على شروطهم, that the Muslims are upon their contractual conditions like whatever a person has agreed to in a contract uh, then that is what a muslim is upon in terms of validity that he must fulfill and in terms of what is allowed for him al muslimuna ala shurutihim so obviously hada amun yashmal al i'tikaf this is general and it includes the conditions or the contractual nature of i'tikaf that a person can make it a condition upon himself to leave i'tikaf for certain reasons. And also uh, from the companions, Daba'a bint Zubair radiallahu anha qalat, this uh, female companion, she said, Ya Rasulullah, inni uridu al-hajj wa ajiduni shakiya. She said, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want to do hajj, but I find myself in a lot of pain. فَقَالَ فَقَالَ لَهَا النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ So the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ said to her, هُجِّي وَشْتَرِطِي Make hajj, but make a condition upon yourself. قُولِي اللَّهُمَّ مَحَلِّي حَيْثُ حَبَسْتَنِي Say, O oh Allah, my limit of my ihram is to the point where you have prevented me. Where you have pre prevented me from going any further. Meaning, you've not allowed me the capability of good health to go any further than this in my ihram. So for her not to break the conditions of her ihram, she is allowed to make this condition. That Allah, my ihram is to the extent where you have prevented me from going any further. So this hadith is in Bukhari Muslim. وَإِذَا جَازَ الْإِشْتِرَاطُ فِي الْحَجْمَ عَمْ وُجُوبِ الْمَضِيِّ فِي نَفْلِهِ 
ففي الاعتكاف من باب الاولى so شيخ فهد المطيري in explaining this حفظ الله he said if it's if it's permissible to do this in Hajj and it's known that in Hajj even in the Nafr that when the Hajj is broken that you still have to continue the Hajj you still have to fulfill the Hajj you have to complete the rites then more so with regards to the Bab with that which is less than Hajj which, which is I'tikaf so in general the summary that a person if they make condition upon themselves in the uh, I'tikaf in the, um, the one that they have vowed upon themselves that they are going to have certain exemptions which are allowed by the Sharia then this is permissible well, not that, that's too much detail, let's leave that so the author he says وَإِنْ وَطِئَ فِي فَرْجِ وَطِئَ فِي الْفَرْجِ فَسَدَ اَعْتِكَافُهُ if a person has sexual intercourse whereupon he enters into the private passage of his wife then the اعتكاف is going to be invalidated الاعتكاف له مبتلات so اعتكاف it has certain things which invalidate the اعتكاف from them is what we just mentioned الجماع فيبتلوا بالاجماع so this by consensus breaks the اعتكاف because the ayah in the Quran ولا تباشروهن وانتم آكفون في المساجد do not have sexual relationships with your women with your wives whilst you are in the masjid as mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah and the, thani, the second thing that will break the i'tikaf is al-inzal bil-mubashrata bil-mubashrati li zawjatihi aw bil-istimna aw bi-tikrar nadhar li ma yuthir li anna nadhrat al-ula ma'fuun lahu anha is to touch the wife or in a sexual manner or to masturbate or to look at that which arouses him and then the person ejaculates a semen all of this will break the will break the i'tikaf of the person طيب, the third thing which will break the i'tikaf is شرب أو أكل بما يذهب العقل ويسكر uh, to eat or drink anything uh, that will make the person intoxicated to the extent where he will be fully intoxicated or يعني, in general intoxicated because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَقَرُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَارَ حَتَّى تَعْلَمُوا مَا تَقُولُونَ in Surah Al-Nisa O you who believe do not come close to the salah whilst in a state of drunkenness until you know what you are saying so how is this a proof for the fact that the person if they, uh, if they are intoxicated then this breaks the i'tikaf again the verse says O you who believe, do not come close to the salah whilst you are in state of intoxication until you know what you are saying. So how is this then used as a proof, though it's talking about salah, how is it used as a proof that if a person is intoxicated while in i'tikaf, it will break the i'tikaf. طيب, the ulama they say, وَالنَّحْيِي وَالنَّهْيِي عَنْ قُرْبَانِ الصَّلَاةِ حال السكر يستلزم النهي القربان المواضعها that the fact that it's forbidden for the person to come close to the salah whilst he is intoxicated also necessitates that it's forbidden for him to come close to the places of the salah whilst he is intoxicated meaning the masajid so if a person is intoxicated they cannot obviously then make i'tikaf in the masjid uh, the fourth thing that causes a person's i'tikaf to be broken is a ridda, is apostasy from Islam. A ridda to an Islam. Allah ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Zumar, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَقْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمُلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ that it was said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, verily and certainly it was revealed to you, O Muhammad, and to those before you, that if you make partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this will destroy and render void your deeds and you will then be from those who are from the losers so ridda is something which destroys the deeds of a person the author he goes on and he says بالقرب, and it's recommended that the person keeps himself occupied and busy with acts of worship as we said that this act of worship is you have turned away from the dunya to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the one who has done this and he's making i'tikaf he shouldn't waste his time with the people in matters of the dunya rather he should spend as much time as he possibly can 
facing towards the akhirah, facing towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The author, he says, وَاجْتِنَابُ مَا لَا يَعْنِهِ And also to be away from that which doesn't concern him. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith which is famous, مِنْ حُسْنِ الْإِسْلَامِ الْمَرْ تَلْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِهِ From the goodness of one's Islam is to turn away from and to leave alone that which is of no concern to him. So the person shouldn't be sitting in the masjid gossiping, finding out about that which is not to do with him. Rather, he should be focused solely on the fact that this may be his last chance to boost his iman, to gain this huge reward of i'tikaf in the last 10 days and 10 nights of Ramadan. And he should be focusing solely on obeying Allah with the variety of different acts of worship and to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bin Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anything which was correct in our journey through the chapters of fasting and itikaf was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shortcomings and mistakes were from myself and shaitan. If you have any questions or clarifications on these matters, then feel free. Wa jazakumullahu khairah.